Words matter. Words have meaning. There are words that people are telling us. There are words that people are saying to us. But then there's also the things that we're saying in our head. So I want to talk about the power of words today because actually back in 2019, I think it was, um, it was before I was pregnant with Bo, I actually went to a live international Maxwell certification. Um, and that's where I got certified as a coach, speaker, and trainer in the John Maxwell way. And um, the crazy thing about that trip, like, let's talk about resistance, right? I talk about resistance a lot as confirmation that we're going in the right direction. Um, whereas a lot of people hit resistance or obstacles and they're like, well, that's it. I must give up, right? Like, it wasn't meant to be, but I look at those things as confirmation I'm going in the right direction. And um, so getting to this conference was crazy. Like, just I think a day or two before people in our house started getting sick like Emma came down with the pukes um, and then everyone seemed fine and then later that night it hit me and this was like the night before I'm supposed to fly out the next day to Orlando at like I don't know I think I had to be at the airport probably at like four in the morning or something and I'm just like I remember taking a shower feeling awful I mean you know how it is when you get that 24-hour pukey bug like you feel terrible you feel weak you feel gross like and I'm showering and I'm like having a conversation out loud to myself I think Zach was in the bathroom at the time but I was just like can I do this is it worth it what am I gonna do like I'm still puking like should I go <laughs> um and I was like I already paid my money like at this point I can't back out right like I mean, sure, they, they hold these um, certifications live twice a year, right? There's one in March also, but I was going to the one that's in August. And I was like, I've already lined up, you know, all of the child care. Um, Zach's taken off some of it. Like, I've got my plane tickets. I've already booked my hotel. Um, I was like, can I muscle through it? And so in that moment in the shower, I was like, I'm going to do it. Like. Woo, I don't know. I, I just dug deep down and was like, you've done harder things. You can do this and you're going to do it. Um, and so I think it was worse because at the time I had, we had just found out, I think that we were pregnant with Bo and, you know, so there was nausea from that too. So then mix that together with the stomach bug. And I was like, ah, right. So I remember <laughs> directly like, it's one of those things where you're like hunched over and you're like, whew, you just keep pausing to breathe. And I just kept doing that and like got my bag packed, like in the car. I remember getting to the airport and, and I was like sniffing peppermint oil all the way to the airport to calm my nausea. Literally got out of the airport, walked over to the bushes, puked again. Thankfully, that was the last time I puked. But then it was like, and I like, bye, honey. Like, we didn't want to smooch because I didn't want to get him sick, you know, and whatever. And then I went inside and there was a super long line. Like, it was so early in the morning. I'm just like, what, what are all you people doing here? But I just remember standing in that line waiting to go through security and making sure I knew exactly where every single trash can was and being like, okay. Like you can do this. Like you're feeling terrible. Like you're you're gonna you're you have committed. You are fully committed. You are going on this trip. You're getting the certification. Like we are doing this dang thing, right? Because you can do hard things. You know, I'm telling myself this. Like that's how I'm talking to myself. Um, and things that I never puked again. I still felt nauseous, but I think that was more of like the early morning sickness. And I remember sitting next to this poor man on the plane, and I, you know, I was like, yeah, it's morning sickness. I didn't want to freak him out. I wanted him to be like, I hope he didn't get sick. Dear Lord, I hope that man didn't get sick because of me. But anyway, I was supposed to sit in the middle. And I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, I really need to sit on the, the, the outside just in case I need to get up and go puke again, right? And so this man sitting next to me, I was just like, or he was going to be sitting in the aisle. And I was like, you know, I'm really early pregnant. Like, feeling super nauseous. Would you mind switching seats with me so that I can sit in the aisle just in case I need to run to the bathroom? He's like, no, not at all. Like, it's really fine. And we had conversations and he's like, you know, my wife had really bad morning sickness and she ended up getting prescribed these things for all the nausea. And I was like, yeah, I don't think that's quite it. But I was just like, thank you for sharing, you know, whatever. And just the whole time I'm just like, just breathing. Right. Okay. Anyway, so I got to that conference, right? I got to that certification conference. 
Um, I remember I got there so late, like I missed some of the, it wasn't the actual first session. It was more of like the meet and greet. And I just remember like still feeling pretty terrible because at this point, like I haven't eaten anything all day <laughs> for almost 24 hours now. Um, and I remember walking into this huge room at, um, what's it called? It's the Orlando, like the World Conference Center or something like that. Anyway, if you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. It's huge, right? Tons of walking. Hadn't even checked into my hotel room at the time. Had my big suitcase with me. And I just remember leaning against the wall thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Like I'm going to pass out because I need some food. But I wanted to be here. Like I did all of this to be here, right? I did the hard thing to be here. And John Maxwell was on the stage and getting to listen to him teach live and in person, like, so worth it. But then when I went back to the room, I was like, I need room service now. And I remember I ordered like some kind of chicken wrap or something. And when I got it, like, I think this was like the morning sickness, which is actually all day, like was kicking up on the back end. So like I was over the 24 hour bug, which didn't even last 24 hours for me. Thank the Lord. But now I have this nausea. And so then I'm like struggling with like eating that, like keeping that in my belly, but I was fine and I did it. But all this to say, so at this conference, though, like I did the hard thing to get there. <laughs> Crazy thing, moved mountains and myself, within myself and my mindset, because I had every reason in the book not to go, right? I had every excuse to stay home. Um, and I just said, no, I'm not going to do that. Like I've come too far to go back now. Like I'm not doing that. Um, and so part of the certification was we actually had to prepare and deliver a speech. Um, and for some reason, I didn't know that, and I'm not sure why. So I actually prepared a speech on the fly, because that's kind of how I am. Um, practiced several times in my room the night before, whatever. And then we just had to deliver that speech like to our table. So there were maybe like five other people at the table. Um, no big deal. Like public speaking to me is not a scary thing. I know that some people would rather like die <laughs> than public speak, which that's not me. Like, sure, I get I get nervous, you know, but um, but I was also in theater, like all the things, right? Anyway, um, and then there was actually a contest at the same time that like people who actually like pre-did their speech and submitted it in video, like actually got to deliver on the stage. And I was like, oh, I totally should have done that because I thought my speech was great. Um, and the reason I'm sharing that with you today is because what I talked about was that words have power, right? But words also only have as much power as we give them. And so that's where that twofold comes in. Um, and I shared the story, you know, part of like this speech was like, how did we engage our audience? Um, you know, was it compelling? Did we move people like those kinds of things, right? Like, because this is about dynamic speaking. Um, because I was on the speaker. No, I was actually on the coach route. But thankfully, we got like all the different aspects of it. So like we got the train to how to be a trainer, how to be a speaker. Um, and then actually all of the certification that I did online, like all that training was specifically in the coaching realm. So that was really cool. Anyway, so in this speech, I talked about the too much, right? Like growing up, and I've shared this story with you guys before. I think I have. Maybe I've just shared this inside coaching. I don't know. Um, but growing up, I had TOO attached to me in three different occasions. Um, and those things prompted me or compelled me to start second guessing myself, overthinking things and to like watering myself down, toning myself down, um, holding back those kinds of things. And the first one was someone told me that I was too smiley, like too nice. Um, and I remember that it was in middle school. I was on the bus and I, they told me I was too nice. Um, I smiled too much. And I just remember thinking like, and how is that a bad thing? And so I remember thinking that like, how is that a bad thing? But I don't want to be a weirdo, right? So I should probably smile a little less, right? Um, and then fast forward, there was a, a teacher in high school that told me that, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve, that I'm too transparent, and that's going to lead to me getting hurt. And I was like, well, I don't want to get hurt. So maybe I should not be as transparent. Like, maybe I should be a little bit more guarded, right? And so I started to be a little bit more guarded with people. And, um, and then in college, I had a boy tell me that I was too much, I was too passionate, right? Um, and actually, fast forward to when I met Zach, my husband, 
it just turns out that I just needed someone who matched my level of two-ness, <laughs> right? Um, and, you know, but but those things, those, you know, too smiley, too nice, too transparent, too much, like those translated into me watering myself down because I allowed people to give those words power in my life and in my mind that they they did not deserve, right? And they shouldn't have been there. Um, and so the other side of that is the power that we give the words that we're telling ourselves in our head. And, you know, these are the common phrases like, oh, you're an idiot, or you're so stupid. Why did you do that? Or this always happens to me. Um, all of those kinds of things are like, why can't you be more like so and so? Or why do you keep doing these stupid things when you know that it's not what you want to do, you know, those kinds of things, like th those things you would never say out loud to somebody else, but you say to yourself all the time. And those are the words that are going to diminish our voice, are going to hold us back from stepping fully into the calling that God has on us and also dims our light for the talents that God has instilled in us. Because here's what I learned about that, is those things that were labeled as me as P O O two something. Those are actually the best parts about me. Like I smile all the time. I am full of joy. Like that's me. That's my personality, right? Like that's, I think that's one of the best things that God put in me that I can always find the silver lining, right? Like I can, like, I feel like the dad in my big fat Greek wedding, when he's like, give me any word and I will tell you the Greek root of it. And I'm like, give me any situation and we will find the opportunity for growth and learning in this situation, right? Like, that's me. And like the too transparent, like the fact that authenticity is like my middle name, like, I don't want to be a faker. I don't want to fake it till I make it. Like, I want to be the real me. Um, if you caught my stories recently, um, I was sharing how I came across a reel where I was talking about, you know, are you afraid to make videos because your house isn't aesthetically pleasing? Like, here's what you need to do. You can go, you can change the background, you can pick a house that is aesthetically pleasing and make your video in that setting. And I was like, no, do not do that. That's fake as heck. Like, why, why would you do that? Like, that's creating this like false narrative. That's so stupid. Like, I'm sorry. If you're watching this video, look around. <laughs> Like, there's someone else behind me. Like, we got a towel thing on the staircase. We got a bag that was never unpacked from Tuesday. Um, if you scale a little bit, we got a big pile of to random toys. There's a pile of clothes in the stairs. You know, like, we have five kids, and they throw their stuff everywhere. So those are, like, my piles where they get consolidated to keep the chaos to a minimum so that then they can go put them where they're supposed to be. Like, I actually just organized this, so it's looking better behind me. But, like, you know, like... <laughs> this is real life and this is what we relate to and I have never watched someone with a perfectly tidied house and think man like I just I go to their house and hang out and be their friend like no what I thought was oh my gosh I never want to go to their house because their house is so perfect and my house is so not perfect and then I start questioning myself like should I be spending more time cleaning my house than I do like right and uh-uh, no, mm-mm, 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 there's this part in, um, We Were Soldiers where it's sad, but the, they come to tell a, a woman that her husband was died, was killed in action, and her response is, mm-mm, mm-mm, and I always think that. Anytime, like, something comes up where I'm just like, no, 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 no. that's, like, my, my gut reaction is to be like, mm-mm, no, okay, so anyways, um, back to authenticity like saying that i'm too transparent like that's actually a really good thing because what you see is what you get with me and when i'm fully stepping into who i am i am going to be fully transparent and i'm going to tell you like it is i'm going to give you the real life real not the highlight real um you know and you can trust that right um but when i'm trying to dim myself down that's where i step into this place of fakeness and like people pleasing and trying not to offend anybody or trying to depict a picture that's not actually truthful, right? Like nobody likes it. That's not helpful. Um, and that doesn't help me live out my calling. Like that's one of my life. Right. And then the third one of being too much is like, 
they, there's that saying like too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Really? I disagree. I disagree. I disagree because you know what? When you love something and you are passionate about something, you jump out of bed just overwhelmingly drenching your life in that thing, right? Like, so are you telling me that loving the Lord too much is a good thing? stupid like shut up right I, I watch Colleen Nichols a lot and she has that uh you shut up series and so anytime I go to say like shut up you shut up I'm like that's Colleen Nichols so we need to give her the credit for that like that was her deal but now like she's living in my head rent free and so I like my response like shut up you shut up anyway but it's her thing it's not mine um I need to come up with my own thing but uh <laughs> anyway like no, I just I disagree with that. And I think the fact that I'm too much like will freak some people out. And it does most people but that's their problem, not mine. I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry if I'm too positive and looking for the ways that we can learn the lessons we can learn through the obstacles. Like if that makes you uncomfortable. You probably shouldn't hang around with me because I'm going to make you uncomfortable. I'm going to challenge you. You know, I'm going to tell you that if you're not growing, you're dying. <laughs> like that always those are that's still my top performing podcast episode is if you're not growing you're dying and it makes us uncomfortable right because that means that we actually have to do something we actually have to intentionally grow we actually have to put our paddleboard in the river and paddle right because if we don't then the current's going to take us wherever the heck it wants and like it or not you're going to probably end up where you never intended to be right so you have to take intentional action and so i'm telling you all of this because the words that we say in our head and the words that we allow other people to speak into us they do hold power but they only hold as much power as we allow them to have right they can only take up uh, take up as much space in our heads as we are allowing them to have entrance into the party right and so one thing I would encourage you to do today is to, first of all, take account of the voices that are around you. Maybe look back at your life and, and see if you have any very vivid memories of when someone spoke something into you that made you start to question yourself or made you start to tone yourself down, water yourself down, hold yourself back, keep yourself a little guarded, right? Um, and explore that and explore that actual thing that they were talking about and maybe if you're like me, you're going to find out that that's actually the best thing about you. And that's something you need to lean into and put more power into, not in what they said about you, but actually in unleashing what they said about you. And then the second thing is to take a census of what's going on in your head between your ears, your mindset, because your, your life is going to move in the direction of your strongest thought. And so if your strongest thoughts are, I'm an idiot, this always happens to me blotty, 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 blah, with some kind of negative spin, like, that's the direction your life is going to move. And have you ever wondered why bad things continue happening to certain people? Have you ever spent a couple seconds just talking to them? You'll find out pretty quick, you know, and like, I've had um, people say to us, like, wow, like, everything just goes right for you. First of all, it doesn't. But we look at obstacles as opportunities and challenges to grow versus walls that we can't go around. Let me tell you, when it comes to walls, you might not be able to go over it, but you can go through it, you can go around it, you can go under it, like you can catapult over it. Like there are so many ways, right? You just gotta get creative and figure it out, right? But you have to be committed to getting beyond it rather than focusing on the actual obstacle itself. Um, if you guys have heard me talk about breaking the boards with uh, Brian Byro, is that who it was? I think so. Um, it was at a Chagley Global Conference in like 2017, I think, maybe in Atlanta. Is that right? I think so. I don't know. I don't remember. Memory, timelines, not great. Go ask Zach. He probably knows better than I do. Um, but we did this breaking boards thing. And I actually did this again with a, uh, in, uh, for Unleash the Power Within with Tony Robbins um, just a few years ago. And the crazy thing about this was, you know, if you look at that board, like as you're hitting it, right, like you're hitting it and you're just focused on the board, you're not going to break it. You're not going to break through that board. You actually have to look beyond that board to where your hand is going beyond it. And you don't focus on that board at all. You look through it, past it, wherever you need to look, and then you go right through it, right? And it's the same with obstacles. Um, and so it's the same with 
anything, any kind of challenge. And depending on your perspective, because your perspective is your belief, right? That's rooted in your beliefs and your beliefs shape your emotions, which drive your behaviors, which create your outcomes, right? We talk about this all the time. This is my MO. I will talk about this all the day long because if your mindset is set on the right things in the right direction, then you are going to be unstoppable. This is why I love doing things like marathons, um, running any kind of race that's a challenge, doing hard things because when you physically do hard things, your mindset increases because then you have this evidence. Your brain has this evidence of I can do hard things. I just did, did I just do, I did that y'all. Like I did that. It sucked, but I did it. I kept going. I refused to quit. Now, how can I translate that into the rest of my life? And now our brain is looking for evidence of how we can also do hard things in other areas of our life, right? Like, Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. Like write that down. Challenge your body to do something hard and see how it happens. You know, I've had, I've birthed six babies, okay? One was a bonus baby for someone else as a gestational carrier, but five of my own, okay? And I have primarily done these without any kind of pain medication, um, all natural, minus uh, for like some of the laboring part, like um, just those contractions that are building up to the actual delivery part, like a uh, couple, three of them. I did have, like I had laughing gas for one, um, I had uh, a pain drip for one, um, and I had uh, like a shot pain drip for the last one. And what it, let me tell you though, but every single birth that wore off right as I'm moving into the pushing stage, right? Which I am so thankful for because you want to be with it. Like you want to be able to feel your body at that point, because if you're working against your body, that's when it really, really hurts. Now, don't get me wrong, it still hurts. But when you actually work with your body, as your body is trying to push the baby out, instead of against it, of tensing up and feeling the pain and not being able to move, like, you're going to slow the whole process down. But let me tell you, through those things, those are, I've done hard things, you know, like, it is hard, but there is a deeply rooted burning fire that kicks in inside of me that is determination at its finest, and I will not quit. I will do the dang thing and I will push through because I am someone who does hard things. And that is a phrase, a group of words that lives rent free in my brain that drives me forward towards things, right? Um, and so now if I went into those things thinking, oh my gosh, this is the worst, I'm going to die, uh, I can't handle the pain, it was going to, if they would have gone much differently, I probably wouldn't have as many kids. But instead, I went in with it thinking, I'm going to work with my body. My body knows what to do. I'm going to trust my body. I'm going to push through this when I need to. And for every single child I've birthed, I believe it was either one to three pushes. The, the exception being with Holly, my first, because it was my first labor and delivery. Never done it before. Had no idea what I was doing. Took the classes. The classes suck. They don't tell you. It's like a giant poop. Okay. If you've not had a baby yet, this is for you. Having birthing a child is like taking a giant poop, okay? It's like that overwhelming sensation of, oh my gosh, I have to take a crap, right? But it's like amplified a million times more. There is pain that goes along with it, but there is such satisfaction with it, right? Like when it's done and in the process, like, okay. So anyway, um, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to work with my body. I Thankfully, I had an amazing nurse at that time who helped me through it medication-free um, with the contractions, she taught me how to breathe. She taught me how to focus. She taught me how to look at what I was working for, which was holding that baby in my arms. And that was something I held on to. That was a mindset that I took into every single labor and delivery with all of my kids and bonus baby, right? And like that changed everything for me. Um, and so I would encourage you and challenge you in your life to take an assessment of the thoughts that are driving you and write them down. Because a lot of times the things that we're saying, right, as I said, you would never say them out loud to somebody else, right? Like you would never go up to a person or your child and say the things to them that you are saying to yourself in your head. Like it's so unkind and so vicious. You would never do that, right? But you do it to yourself. I know it because I've done it to myself too. 
like looking at them, oh, you're so fat or, oh, you're so ugly or, oh, that looks so terrible on you or blah, 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 blah. Those are so, you would never say, I hope you, I know anyone listening to this, none of you guys would ever say that to anybody else, right? There are people in this world that do say those things, right? And it's because they are sitting behind the screen and they're not willing to actually look in the mirror at themselves first and they're translating that onto other people because they feel the power in that, right? Because and I've always said this to my daughter that a sign of a confident person is someone who will lift other people up and build them up. But a sign of someone who lacks confidence is they will tear other people down in order to build themselves up. So if you want to be confident, if you want to be someone who attracts other people who are growing, you compliment other people. Truly, authentically, genuinely look for ways that you can compliment people and change and like help them to change their day, right? Help them to change their thinking. Now, only they can truly create that lasting change in their thinking, but you can help, right? And it shows that you're a confident leader and that you don't need to tear other people down to build yourselves up. Like that's dumb. Like don't do that. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to write down those nasty thoughts that you got going on in your head about yourself, right? About who you are, about what you do, about how you show up, those kinds of things. Write them all down because here's the thing. When you write those things down, seeing them on paper, then read them out loud to yourself or even read them out loud to somebody else, they lose their power. And you can even light the list on fire and rewrite those thoughts and start practicing a new set of words that are going to take up space in your brain rent free that are going to drive you forward like I can do hard things look back at your life look for the evidence that you did hard things whether physically or mentally and now you're on the other side of that and then translate that going forward into your day into your present day into where you're going in the future um, because words have power yes they do but they only have as much power as we give them and this has to start with that awareness because we can't change what we aren't aware of. And most of these things are going on completely subconsciously. We're not aware of them. They're in our um, primal brain. Like I've talked about all the time is that primal brain. It wants to protect us at all costs and it doesn't like the unknown, right? And so when we're trying to change things and we don't have the evidence yet, our brain is looking for evidence to support the belief. And so we have to create the new belief. And too often people go too far you know, with this crazy belief that your brain's like, yeah, right. Like, that's not true. I've seen your bank account. That's not true. I've seen the things that you ate today. That's not true. Right. But create the evidence for your brain and have it, have your brain work for you to look for those things, because then you're taking a subconscious thought, you're rewriting it, you're bringing it into your conscious thinking. So then you can actually think through, through it without a lens of fear and protection and, you know, looking for perceived threats, right? Instead, you're looking for the evidence to confirm the belief that you have. So words are powerful, but they also only have as much power as we give them. If you enjoyed this, leave me a comment. Tell me what stuck out to you. If you think that this would be helpful to, to someone you love dearly who would be open to this kind of challenge, share this episode with them, and I will see you on the other side next time.